Now, my love of cars comes from a love of vans, in particular VW vans. True fact that. So you can't imagine how excited I am to finally drive this, the new Volkswagen ID Buzz Cargo. So has it been worth the wait? But before I deliver the electrifying.com verdict, do click on that subscribe button because if you love electric cars or vans, this is the place to be. My affection for the VW Type 2 goes way back. Growing up, there was just always one of them in my family. It was the only form of transport my dad, who was a builder, would consider. We had everything from campers to vans, pickups, and they were some of the vehicles that helped form my lifelong love affair with cars. And now, 72 years after the first one was built, VW has given it a complete reboot for the electric age. It's available as a five-seater passenger version and this, a three-seater panel van that I reckon is the coolest of the two, an electric VW van. My 10-year-old self would never have believed it. I think I might be stating the obvious here when I say that it looks incredible. So this is the first time I've seen it in the metal without that disguise that it had. I drove that version earlier this year. Oh, I've got to say, I think it looks really cool. Um, like the original, the buzzer's got the motor at the back, which means you get the short overhang at the front, which looks fantastic. Under the floor is something called VW's NEB platform, which is a sort of universal underpinnings that you'll find in nearly all of the group's electric cars, everything from the VW ID3 to the Cupra Born. It's such a clever bit of design because it's instantly recognisable as a classic Volkswagen van. But all the details, well, they're bang up to date. This lighting strip and the daytime running lights match those fitted to the ID 3, 4 and 5. And this familiar honeycomb grille has been supersized for the buzz. However, there are some quirky bits too. It's a little bit odd to see the cameras housed here at the bottom edge of the windscreen. And if I open the bonnet, this fabric strap thing does feel a bit like something you'd use to fix up in your shed. Now, one of the big advantages of building a van on an electric platform is you can really stretch the size of the load area. So there's just under four cubic metres of space in here. It's very roomy. If you want, you can fit two Euro pallets within the space. In terms of payload, the entry-level Commerce can carry up to 607 kilograms, while the Commerce Plus is rated at 592 kilograms. At the back, the cargo does come with a tailgate as standard, but you can add a pair of wing doors like these as an option. Now, there is a fair old distance between the floor and the load sills, and this is actually higher than you'd find in the transporter, which is because the battery pack raises the floor up a little. So even the entry-level bus cargo comes with a nice plywood lining on the floor. There are loads of lashing rings around the place, now in the side panels, to keep everything where it should be. It is quite hard to imagine right now, but when VW gets around to making this into a camper van, which they say will be in the second half of the decade, I think this is going to make a lovely bedroom. So inside the cargo gets this two plus one seating arrangement. But if you don't like the idea of rubbing shoulders with somebody in the middle seat, which I actually think is really practical, you can choose to have two single seats as a no cost option. Now it's not quite as colourful in here as the, uh, the people version, which you can spec in different colours, but the basic layout is largely the same. So you get a simpler dashboard with a storage area rather than the double decker design that the uh, people version gets. The infotainment system is also a bit simpler if you opt for the entry level model, but you still have a 10 inch touchscreen that will work with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now the Buzz also comes with the third generation of VW's ID software. It's better than it was and there are some decent improvements in some areas, including the ability to now receive over-the-air updates. But I still wouldn't describe this as the finished article. It's still quite slow to start up when you get in and some of the screens take a while to load. It is better VW. And I know it's tricky doing all this stuff, but it does still feel like a bit of a work in progress. Another thing that I'd quite like is for it to be slightly angled towards the driver. Um, just when you're out behind the wheel, 
it would be nice just to be able to, to see it without kind of having to glance over. The higher spec Commerce Plus comes with VW's built-in navigation as standard and this bigger 12-inch screen. But when it comes to the driving position itself, I really like it. It goes without saying that I like the height being so, so short. Um, and you do feel an awful long way away from the front of the van, but that again is something that I love about this. Um, the windscreen is massive, uh, and that housing down there that has all the cameras inside, it takes a bit of getting used to, but you do start to ignore it after a while. Um, visibility is surprisingly good in here, thanks to these really nice bright quarter lights. And the other thing I like is all the storage. There are loads of compartments in the doors, dotted around the place. This one down here at the front is brilliant. I can always remember the front of my dad's vans being filled with loads of paperwork that he hadn't got around to filing. It's probably all on iPads now, isn't it? Um, but there's also just practical things like um, a 12 volt power outlet and uh, USB-C uh, chargers, both on the front and also in the door. All in all, this is a really well thought out practical interior. The Buzz gets the biggest battery VW currently offers, a 77 kilowatt hour pack that can do up to 256 miles on the WLTP cycle. This equates to efficiency of around 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. As for charging, well, it can take a DC rapid charge at 170 kilowatts, which is pretty good. A 10 to 80% fill up should take around half an hour. And if you need a splash and dash to get home, then 90 miles of range will take about 10 minutes to add. Now, another thing to point out is that the VW Buzz comes with plug and charge as standard. What that means is that when you plug into a charge point that has got auto charge enabled, like a Fastnet charger, for example, the charger recognises the car and starts the session. No more flapping around with credit cards and dealing with broken card readers. Ugh, oh, what bliss. The Buzz comes as standard with an 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger, but there isn't an option to get a higher speed AC charger, even if you delve right into the extensive options list. A full charge on a seven kilowatt home wall box is going to take you around 11 hours. I've always loved driving vans. I just like the position, I think. Um, but this takes everything to a new level and it's a bit odd driving a commercial vehicle without having a burly soundproofed diesel engine thrashing away under the front. I would say just listen, um, but it's actually pretty rainy today so you can hear the, the road noise a lot more in the wind, but it is really quiet. Now look, this isn't fast, but I'm absolutely okay with that. Top speed is uh, 90 miles per hour, not 60, just over 10 seconds. However, being electric, it feels much livelier than the figures suggest, particularly like this when it's empty. The ride is pretty good. It's actually really quite comfortable. And you can tell the Volkswagen has worked really hard on the cabin quality and the interior. We've been driving on some pretty rubbish roads this morning in not great weather, and I've hardly heard a squeak or a creak come from the interior and honestly we could not have picked the worst day to do this in it's absolutely tipping it down the conditions are dreadful but I'm not letting that bother me because first and foremost this is a really happy van other road users really love it um, I've had about four people smile at me there's an Aston Martin <laughs> Aston Martin just gone past just flashed his lights waved um, it's the same kind of reaction that you uh, used to get when the VW Beetle came back and you know the very early ones were on the road. So yes it might be grey skies but I'm not letting that wipe the smile off my face. One thing that does slightly disappoint me though is the lack of regeneration that I'm getting in the buzz. Um, you've got D mode which is none at all. Uh, there is a B mode that you can put it into but that's kind of regeneration-ish and I really would like to have a bit more of it because I think um, the Buzz just by the nature of its size and its weight would work really well with one pedal driving. Now we're not able to try the Buzz with a full load today but it does feel a really well-balanced thing to drive. There's very little body roll thanks to all the weight being carried so low down and I really like the steering it's got a really nice weight and balance to it. It's also got an absolutely brilliant turning circle of just 11.1 metres. That's actually two metres tighter than a transporter can manage. And it does make a big difference when you're trying to squeeze into tight parking spaces or making new turns. 
And if you want to get the buzz to park itself, then it can. This is the first Volkswagen commercial vehicle to be offered with full Park Assist Plus, which can reverse you in and out of parking spaces. It's really making me reminisce driving this. I've suddenly got a sense of um, the smell of sawdust, which is what my dad's uh, VW vans used to always smell off because he's a joiner. Those cars back in the day used to double, you know, if they were his work vehicles, but they were also the family transport as well. Um, and I think just as they did the job back then, this one also does the job, but actually in a much more refined way. As I said, the, the materials in here are, are really nice. The, the cabin is, is comfortable. It just feels quite plush in here. Um, so it would work really well as a, as a workhorse to be you know, loaded up and do all those jobs that you need to do with it, but also transport the family around. It's a really good dual purpose vehicle. The ID Buzz Cargo comes in two versions, Commerce and Commerce Plus. The cheapest version starts at £41,621, whilst the range topper will set you back £46,721. Both of those figures include VAT and the government grant of £5,000. Now, if you're a business and you can claim the VAT back, then you can lop around £7,500 to £8,000 off those figures. In terms of kit, the Commerce comes with 18-inch steel wheels, black bumpers and twin sliding doors. You also get a basic but functional infotainment system and a load of safety kit, including autonomous emergency braking and parking sensors. The Commerce Plus adds 19-inch alloy wheels, body-coloured bumpers and a bigger, better infotainment system. You also get goodies like adaptive cruise control, heated windscreen and a rear-view camera, which is very useful. There is a lot to love about the ID Buzz Cargo. Um, for me, it really hits the mark. It's just a lovely reworking of a much loved classic and something that I had such fond memories of as well. It looks great, it drives really well and it just feels beautifully made. But I can fully appreciate why owners of current diesel vans might be a bit skeptical of it. So if we take away the cute looks and all the emotional baggage, what exactly are we left with? So it's an electric van that will realistically only do around 210 miles between charges. It can carry quite a bit less than say a Volkswagen Transporter, which also costs considerably less. But if we compare it with other electric vans on the market, then the numbers really do start to add up. A Citroen Dispatch Electric is more expensive, has a smaller battery and can't charge as quickly. The same goes for the Vauxhall Vivaro E as well. I think this is an absolutely brilliant start for VW and I know that it has big plans to offer more versions that have longer ranges and more carrying capacity. The thought that I'm left with as I bid a quite sad farewell to the ID Buzz Cargo is that this isn't just a vehicle, it's actually more of a travel companion.